cinnamon bear. Judy and Jimmy and the Cinnamon Bear overtook the Crazy Quilt Dragon last time and cornered him on a cliff overlooking the Root Beer Ocean. But no amount of persuasion could make him hand over the Silver Star, which he had stolen. So nothing remained but to scare him. And scare him they did. And what did Crazy Quilt do but leap off the cliff and land Kerslush in the ocean? They rushed down to meet him as he came dripping through the Root Beer waves, only to discover that he had dropped the Silver Star when he jumped. It's lost again. Everyone is muchly disturbed, and Crazy Quilt is hanging his head. <laughs> this is a pretty kettle of halibuts, if I do say so myself. You're a fine kind of a dragon. First you steal our silver star, and then you go and lose it. Oh, me. Nothing but shame do I get. Shame to the left of me. Shame to the right of me. You're extra bad, and you know it. Now, Jimmy, don't be so mean to Crazy Quilt. He said he was sorry. Ah, oh, my gracious young lady, do I detect a note of sympathy in your sweet voice? Can it be possible you feel sorry for me? Well, I didn't exactly say I was sorry for you. After all, it was very naughty of you to steal our star. Don't try and pull any of that weepy, weepy stuff around here, Crazy Quilt. It won't work. Oh, lass, for ten centuries, uh, maybe eleven, the Crazy Quilt dragons have flourished with nary a blot on their scutcheon. Oh, to think that I must be the one to bring shame to our illustrious name. Oh, there, there, Crazy Quilt. Don't feel so bad about it. I must redeem myself. There's no three ways about it. You've I must. You've done enough already, you overstuffed villain. That's what I say. You'd better scram before I say boo. Oh, please, please. You know how that horrid word affects me. Don't be so impolite, Jimmy. Let's see what Crazy Quill has to say for himself. Oh, thank you, my lovely one. <clears throat> now, if you could all overlook my past offenses... I, I, I'd gladly help you look for the star. Apple sauce with raisins in it. Don't let him fool you, children. I really have a good heart, you know. It's made out of red yarn, and it's big and true as true can be. Don't you think you could see your way clear to let me join up with your expedition? Huh? How's about it? Um, I don't know what to say, Crazy Quill. Well, I do. We don't trust you, Crazy Quill, and that's that. Good for you, Jimmy. Oh, the shame of it all. Oh, agony. Listen, what's that noise, Simon Bear? I wonder... Can you see anybody, Jimmy? No. Look, coming around that rock. Wow. Jiminy Crickets. It's the Ingaboos. Run. Run for your lives, everybody. See you later. Wow. Oh, crazy quilts jump back into the ocean. Why, look. Those Ingaboos are as flat as can be. <laughs> they look like paper dolls. Sure. Paper dolls made out of blotting paper with faces drawn on them. <laughs> Aren't they funny? I don't know about that. They've got pens for spears. And they certainly are scowling, all right. Alto! Oh, don't be silly. How can we halt when we're not moving? Alto! I arrest you, whoever you be, in the name of His Majesty, King Blotto the Third. Ow, wow, wow! Arrest us? For what? We haven't done anything. Oh, but you have, definitely. Prisoners, fall in. We're not prisoners, and we won't fall in. Better step along lively or get pricked by our spears. Maybe we better do as they say. Those pens look plenty sharp. Prisoners, forward march all. Uh, 
This is an outrage. We haven't done a thing, and, well, we're not going to march. That's what. Oh, uh, you... That's just a sample. Now hurry up. I sure wish I had my water pistol with me. I'd fix those Inca boos in a jiffy. I'd soak them up like anything. I could fix them, too, if they didn't have those pesky spear pens. Bless my stuffings, but they're sharp. Look, over there, it's a town. Sure enough. And the houses are made of cardboard. You know, they're sort of wobbling in the breeze. You know what, Jimmy? It looks just like that toy village we got for Christmas last year. See, the walls and the roofs are held together with cardboard flaps. And the windows don't have any glass at all. And the grass we're walking on isn't really grass, it's paper. Just like that green grass uh, we always have in our uh, Easter bunny nests. Do you kind of suppose that beach we were on was made out of sandpaper? That's very funny. I'd laugh the stuffing out of myself if I wasn't so worried about what these Inca boos are going to do with us. Let's ask them and find out. That's a good idea. Uh, hey, you, uh, uh, Mr. Blotter. Oh, 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 what's the matter? Prisoner, you have uttered the greatest insult that can be insulted at a mighty Inca boo. Why? Just because he called you a blotter? Oh. <laughs> if you value your skin, you stuffed monstrosity, never say that terrible word again. Why, uh, why, certainly, if it upsets you that much. But we'd sort of like to know what you're going to do with us. In a few moments, you shall be ushered into the presence of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor of the Incaboos, Incorporated King Blotto the oh, Third. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and what's King Blotto going to do? His Majesty will hear the accusations and pass judgment on you. For what? We haven't hurt anybody. I should say not. That has nothing to do with the case, and King Blotto will punish you accordingly. Now, march Ow, ow, ow. Prisoners, you are about to enter the royal audience chamber. Bow your heads and keep them there until His Majesty speaks. I'm afraid that's impossible for me. You see, my head is fastened on so it can move sideways, but not up and down. Oh, this will never do. Everyone must show His Majesty the utmost respect. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just turn my head clean around so it's facing backwards. How is that? Uh, a bit irregular, but it'll do. Guard, sound the royal folder all. <laughs> Prisoners, forward, Marcho, and keep your heads bowed. Hope I don't stumble. Me too. With my head turned backwards, I haven't the slightest idea where I'm going. Prisoners, Alto. <coughs> your most unusually high highness, we bow in your mighty presence. Hail King Blotto the Third. Ow, ow, ow. More respect, please. You're not half enthusiastic enough. Ow, ow, and double wow. That's better. You may raise your heads now, prisoners. Look, that's King Blotto sitting on an empty ink bottle. What a funny king. Isn't he, Cinnamon Bear? Wait till I get my head twisted around so I can see. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, what a sight. Order, order. Who are these things, Captain? We're not things, we're people. And very good people, I might add. When we wish you to add, we'll tell you about it. Quiet. Proceed, Captain. Your Majesty, we found them standing right on the boundary line of the Dominion of the Incaboos, Incorporated. And what's more, they had their shoes on. Oh. This is an offense, isn't it? Uh, by the way, what offense is it? A violation of Ordinance Number 23, Skidoo, which prohibits foreigners from standing on an Incaboo boundary line with shoes on. Oh, yes, yeah, so it does. Well, how did we know it was against the law? Yeah, we didn't see any boundary line. Where is it? That's what I'd like to know. Where is it? It's a secret. Well, you can't very well arrest us for standing on something that we don't know where it is. Ignorance of the law is nine-tenths of uh, something. And besides, you should have taken your shoes off. Then we wouldn't have bothered you. <laughs> then that lets me out. I don't wear any shoes, so I couldn't very well take them off. What? Then you're doubly guilty because you didn't have any shoes to take off. But that's not fair. That, uh, or, well, that law doesn't say anything like that. Oh, my, so it doesn't. Well, we'll fix that. Uh, where's my royal secretary? Here, Your Majesty. Uh, take an amendment. Quote. People who don't have shoes to take off when they stand on an Inkaboo boundary line are guilty of uh, double treason and arsenic. I, King Blotto III, so will it. Uh, <clears throat> unquote. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. What, 
What do you intend to do with this now? Well, I don't quite know. Something too too terrible, I fancy. That is, unless you uh, want to try and win your freedom. Well, how can we do that? I'll tell you. Ever since the Inkaboos were created, I have been king because of a mysterious, magical inscription I bear on my chest. See it? Yes, I noticed it before. It's some kind of writing. Uh, indeed. Uh, pretty, isn't it? And I'm the only Inkaboo that has such an inscription. Oh, uh, what's it say? That, strangers, is exactly what we've never been able to find out. Wise men from all over the realm have tried for years to decipher it, but in vain. Uh, we know it's most important. So if you prisoners can tell us what it says, we'll allow you to leave unharmed. I, I know what it is, Judy and Jimmy. It's writing that's been blotted on him from a piece of paper. It's just on backward, that's all. If I had a looking glass, I could read it off like nothing. I have a little looking glass, Cinnamon Bear, right here in my sweater pocket. Swell. Give it to him so we can get saved. Here it is. Well, strangers, will you attempt to save your lives? Your Majesty, it has been revealed to me that I may make known to you and your subjects the inscriptions on your Majesty's person. Have I your permission to perform a bit of magic? Uh, you have. Very well. I approach your Majesty. I hold this magic eye to your chest. Now, looking glass, looking glass, shining bright, read us what's within your sight, hocus pocus, ishka bibble. Give him some... Oh, 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 this is good. Come here and look, Judy and Jimmy. <laughs> Why, how dare you laugh at my chest? I can't help it. Do you want to know what your mysterious inscription says? Certainly. Read on. Okay, you asked for it. Here goes. One pound hamburger, half a pound of Limburger cheese, five cents worth of onions. <laughs> he must have been blotted on somebody's shopping list. I regret to inform your majesty that your magical inscription is just the makings of a Dutch lunch. Oh, enough, enough. Your insults and laughter at our royal expense shall cost you dearly. What do you mean? Captain, summon the royal guard. Summon the royal executioner. Executioner? Conduct these insulters outside the gates. Yes, your majesty. And have them thrown into the immense inkwell. Goodness gracious, that sounds bad for our friends, doesn't it? King Blotto III really means business, I'm afraid. It's hard to wait until next time to find out what's going to happen to Judy and Jimmy and the Cinnamon Bear when the Royal Guard and the Royal Executioner take them to the immense inkwell. Mm -hmm.